Three, two, one, let's jam. Do -do 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 -do. Hi, welcome to Mostly Movies After Dark Solo. This is an After Dark episode, which means I'm recording at 12.30, which is probably not great for my uh, mental health, but it'll probably make me a little sillier, so let's hope for that. Um, I live in a place with a few roommates, so I have to be a little quieter, so I'll just maybe get closer to the computer. No, I'll talk normally. Man, this is already getting stupid. Anyways, for those of you who watch, listened to my last episode with my spark of the war with Rambo Raff, a.k.a. Matt something stupid, uh, I'll, I'll continue that in a bit, but um, I also have a phoner today which uh, with my friend Ian Rodriguez. Anyways, fuck it, back to Matt. Uh, I got a lot of heat from that episode, not necessarily all bad, but, you know, a lot of traction, let's say. Uh, I found some people who agreed with me and some people who disagreed, and you are welcome to disagree with me. Tell me I'm an idiot in the comments, please. Uh, give it all the dislikes you want. Um, you're stupid, though, if you enjoy Rambo Ref. If you enjoy Matt's stuff, you're, I mean, probably have an IQ of less than 90. Um, and I mean, I IQ is bullshit anyway, but whatever. Uh, I saw this post on Facebook because he's friends with a mutual friend. Or, well, of course, he says we have a mutual friend. And uh, my friend was talking about Alita Battle Angel, which I recently saw, and that was pretty good. And uh, Matt, as I'm going to call him by his real name, Matt was trashing it. I completely forgot his last name. It's something stupid, though. Um, Matt was trashing it, and I really wanted to say, I, I don't get into arguments on Facebook anymore because it's bullshit. Uh, but I really wanted to say, shut up, dude. You can't even focus a webcam for your goddamn stupid LPs. You think you can criticize something as beautifully rendered as Alita Battle Angel. Um, yeah, that's probably all the mad I'm going to update you on for right now. But, ooh, I'm peeking in the red. Let's hope this doesn't sound bad. Um, I've been getting into 80s anime, 80s, 90s anime recently. Uh, and turns out all the good shit is has character designs by Kenichi Sonoda. Sorry, has char all of it has all the good shit has character designs by Kenichi Sonoda, who I am very big a very big fan of from his work on Gunsmith Cats, which I am actually developing a live action script for. And now I'm going to start on another property of his is uh, Bubblegum Crisis, which fucking rules, dude. It's like Blade Runner meets, I don't know what the comparison I had, I saw was, but it's very Blade Runner. I mean, one of the main characters has a band called, is named Pris, and her band is called The Replicants, or in Japanese it's Replicants, because, you know, L and R's. Um, but yeah, I've been on a bit of an anime binge lately. I read some Alita Battle Angel, and I watched the movie, which is really enjoyable, I thought. Uh, but on Anime General, I, I was watching Akira, because I was ripping the the uh, disc, just the DVD, to uh, my computer for backup. And God damn, that is a beautiful film, just in terms of art art style and, you know, artistic, as an artistic endeavor. It's fucking amazing. Um, as I said, I'm developing a Bubblegum Crisis script, which I'm going to be, which the title is going to be The Night Sabers, which is, you know, the lead group. Because Bubblegum Crisis honestly sounds stupid, and it probably wouldn't have a mass appeal for anyone who didn't know the original anime. Man, I hope this fucking isn't peaking bad. Um, as I said earlier, I watched Alita Battle Angel, and as I said, it was great. I thought, not amazing, but it was much better than I thought it was going to be, because I thought it was going to be shit, dude. But it was pretty fun. Uh, it was much more brutal than I thought it, the PG-13 rating would let it be. And um, I was watching the special features, too, and uh, I think it's really funny that James Cameron can't seem to go <laughs> ten minutes without mentioning Avatar, but, you know, I actually recently got that on Blu-ray, and it's more enjoyable than I remember. Uh, I don't mean to fall into Rambo Raff territory, but uh, Rambo Raff... I'm sorry. John Lando kind of bugs me in his cadence. I'm sure my cadence isn't fucking his style either, but... Um, this is my podcast, so I'm going to say, you know, my opinion. Although, I will say, John Lando has done fucking incredible work. And I don't know why his cadence bothers me, because it really is, it, it, it is a me thing. It's not, it's nothing against John Lando. 
He has done incredible, as I said, he's done incredible work, and he actually has a lot of enthusiasm for his work. Just his cadence comes off as a little phony. And I mean no disrespect to the man, because he's an incredible producer. He's produced some incredible projects. Um, I recently watched uh, Alien Nation, which uh, I have the whole box set of the entire franchise on DVD, and I was ripping the movie. And uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty dope. I, I had forgotten how good it was. Uh, I didn't watch the whole thing, though, so... Uh, I'm going to put in my phoner right now with uh, Ian Rodriguez. All right, so I'd like to welcome Ian Rodriguez to my podcast, uh, Mostly Movies. This is the first phoner of this show. So, Ian, what have you seen lately? Well, I just, what, what we have seen? Hmm. You don't have to well, be theatrical about it, Ian. You can just be, do your normal voice. Well, I, I just... Watch two movies right now. I'm gonna watch Batman the 1989 movie. That's a good one. Uh, what's and, the uh, part about what's? Yeah, okay. Continue. Sorry. And then after that, I have to watch Batman Return on TV and on demand. Oh, you're watching them on TV, dude. Dude, I like uh, there's, that's all that's all I have because. I had enough money to order on HBO or something. Yeah, but that also doesn't guarantee that they'd be... I mean, just own it on disc, dude. I know. Thanks for letting me know. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you can probably find it on YouTube for real cheap. I anyway, see. Anyway, any other movies lately? What's the newest movie you've seen? I oh, well, I haven't seen, I haven't seen it on a disc when I tried. But what's the newest movie you've seen? This is the podcast mostly... Oh. Movies. Like those, uh, um, the book, the movie book is called the movie I seen is called Scary Story Tell in the Dark. Okay, my cousin Cynthia. Think of that? Oh, amazing. Amazing. You you see it? You sound kind of low key on that. Amazing. I heard this is okay. You heard but, or, or you know? I thought you've seen this uh, movie. I seen this movie, but it's not a little scary. Well, it's a it's a horror movie, although it is. PG thirteen. Although it's very PG thirteen. I think you know what? Some of the scariest horror movies are PG thirteen, like The Ring. Oh, The PG Ring. I heard is scary. Ringo, the, yeah, that's a scary movie. I prefer the. Have you seen Ringo? No. Oh, it's the Japanese version. It's great. I heard The Ring is so it's all right. No, it's not just all right. It's fantastic. I heard, no, it's all right. I love it. It's a, I, love it. I like the bar when with Miss Morgan head. Yeah, I know. I, I, I adore the movie. It's it's what got me into horror. Uh, what was your first horror movie, Ian? Let's do an, an interview, sort of, I guess. What about Terminator? It's not a day. horror movie, but okay. It's all right, but uh, it's my big chin. I like when the Terminator, when he take the guns, the clothes. Yeah, I mean, the the what we were talking about was horror movies, but okay. And it is a right good action sci-fi. I mean, I, but, I, I think the first movie was a little better. Yeah, but but the movie I want to see is the horror movie I want to see is I want to I want to watch Halloween with with Michael Myers. You haven't seen Halloween? The, which one? That that was the David Which Curtis one point? haven't you? Which one have you seen? I haven't seen Halloween 2018 yet. It's pretty good. Yeah, but I have to order it on the on demand. Okay, you could also get it on disc, but whatever. Yeah. So, what's your favorite genre, Ian? Just the audience doesn't know you. Let's let's do it like a first time interview. My favorite drama scene. Genre. Genre. What that mean? Genre is the type of movie you like to watch. Like sci sci fi is sort of a genre, but like horror is a genre. Drama, well, drama, action. Well, I like. Any kind of, but like comedy, drama, right, and what's action. Your favorite was the question. The action movie is the Lethal Weapon. Okay, so that's you'd say Lethal Weapon is your favorite movie. Lethal Weapon is a great film. I love it. Okay. It's it's comedy. Well, I like their. I mean, no, it's not comedy. It has some funny moments, but it's not a it's comedy. Action, action moment. I like. I like their 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 weapons used, like guns movie. Uh huh. 
and I like their stunt too. Okay, have you ever seen the movie Navy Seals? Never Seals. Hmm. Navy Seals. It's about the Navy Seals. No, I haven't seen it. It's pretty great. It's got uh, noted pedophile Charlie Sheen, but it's great. Oh. Yeah, it's Navy Seal. Uh, allegedly, quote unquote, allegedly, because uh, he's he was a really fun actor. Oh, I see. I mean, this is according to Denise Richards, like. She alleges some stuff that was that's pretty damning. But I, I was watching Navy Seals the other day, and that's a real fun movie. What year is it? It's uh, ninety one, I believe. Oh, it's got Charlie Sheen, Michael Biehn, Bill Paxton. Wow, well, I've never seen it. Oh, it's really good. It's a really good movie. Uh, Written by Chuck Bearer, who was a Navy Seal. I want to see where my, where my my dad is. Is uh, GI Jane? Okay. Is I heard it's I heard it's, good, it's an awesome film. Have you heard or do you know? I know I I I I know the movie is Have you great. seen it? I see part of it. Okay. I'll come back when you've seen the full thing, I guess. Uh huh. So anyway, best movie of all time, you say? Yeah. And I'm a classical movie, too. Well, no, we're just talking about your favorite of all time. Yeah. Throw away well, every class- other movie. The classic movie I like to see is The Fan Man. So I thought Lethal Weapon was your favorite, though. That's action. Okay. But I'm talking and, about uh, favorite movie of all time. Any kind of film like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, Lethal okay, Weapon. Okay, but I'm talking about what is your number one movie. My number one movie is like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Okay, that's an odd one to be number one, but okay. Because when I saw time, when I watched the Academy Awards, uh-huh. they to- and they tell who's was the best picture, best actors, right. supporting the actors. Academy Awards stink. They're they're dumb. I'm just saying. It's just some old farts' opinions about movies that, like, really it's mostly driven by box office, but, you know. All right. Good to know. Anyway, what's your favorite horror movie, though, then? Well, I like a couple of horror movies, like, like, like Psycho. I mean, Psycho's more of a thriller, but okay. And Halloween. Psycho a thriller. Okay, Halloween, that's great. And The Birds. It's all right. Uh, another one that I consider a thrill. Well, I don't know. Um, what about? Uh, have you ever seen the movie Silent Hill? My sister had. I and I well, have. We're not talking about your sister. We're talking about you. Your sister well, is a guest on the podcast. You are. Well, I I have, I have seen part of it. Okay. Well, it got me into the games, so I'm grateful for it there, but. I mean, I, I re- recently rewatched the. I recently watched the uh, Shout Factory uh, Collector's Edition, which has a. It has a remastered transfer, on Blu-ray, and uh, it was like seeing it really more better than in the theaters, to be honest. Yeah. But it was a really good transfer, and it made me realize that it's not that bad a movie, to be quite honest. It's one of the better video game movies. Yeah. Uh, Thanks. Thank you so much for everything about movie stuff. Yeah, we're still talking, though. You don't have okay. to thank me for being a guest yet. Um, what? Uh, you destroyed my train of thought, dude. Dang it. Um, Silent Hill. It was it was pretty good as far as video game movies go, I thought. And uh, it's, uh, it's about a, a girl. She got t- a girl. She was she ran away. Not really. I mean, that, the first scene is she's trying to throw herself off a cliff because her. Uh, it's, I mean, spoilers, but it's about a girl who is psychically projecting her soul, basically, to draw, like, I don't know how to explain it. Really, because I saw, I saw that part when, when she told the story, when she got tied up. Well, she didn't get tied up. She was just burned by her no, mother. No, she... I mean, well, that's the game. She was burned by her mother. In the movie, she was burned by her her religious aunt. 
The game yeah. is actually much, much darker than that, in that she was burned as not a part of a like Christian witch burning, but a satanic ritual to summon a demon. And then burn her body up. Yeah, as, as opposed to what? Oh, I see. Yeah. No, it, it had very, like, weird overtones, like, the opposite of overtones of the game in certain, in religious aspects, but other than being, like, so somewhat contradictory to the games. It was pretty good. I th I realized, you know, it had to be. It's like video game movies have a real hard time because they have to be both faithful to the spirit of the game and their own thing, and that's real tough to do. Like the only yeah. the only other one I thought did that well was uh, the first Resident Evil movie. Uh, you're a good talk radio quit. Thanks. I can we can take compliments once we're off the air. All right. We're still going, dude. Yeah. Anyway, I got a call from my friend Linda. Okay. How? Why did, would my audience care about that? This thing. Okay. We're still on the radio, dude. Basically. Okay. Have you watched this movie called? You ever watched the comedy movies? I mean, yeah, I've been in. Just, just what? I've seen a lot of them. Like, what are you talking about? Because I forgot the name of them. I don't. I know you're the big, you're a big fan of Chris Farley. Or oh, thanks for like bringing that. it up. If you didn't want to have the name ready, because that, that's a dead end conversation, dude. All right. Um. Anyway, um. So, what are some other movies you've seen recently? Uh, none. I just watched none. I saw it's because. You know, I don't feel like watching Wii right now. It's just there's not not and there's not I'm not tired of movie. Some mad bunch of time, same movies. Okay. Um, I guess well that that was great. I guess that'll be the end of our call-in segment for ever. And that was I probably shouldn't have put that in. Uh, in other news, I. I'm going to have to address the elephant in the room for any of my Ding Dong Show fans. Last, that last show was rough, wasn't it, guys? Uh, I'm glad to have gotten the support that I have uh, on my set, because that was really hard to do. After Schizo had... I don't even want to... You know, after Schizo said those things, it was pretty tough to do my set. But apparently you guys have liked it, and I really appreciate that. Uh, my favorite new joke, I mean, I have maybe one every two months as new jokes, but, you know, uh, is my new Neurophone joke, where uh, I got these headsets called the called Neurophones. They're a subscription-based thing, and I mean, I know this is boring, but it, I think it's interesting, so I'm going to talk about it. But it maps out my ears with, like, sonic waves and uses an AI to determine how... I mean, the sound quality is really good. I, if I had sponsors, Neurophone would be one of them if they would come and sponsor me. In other news, I saw the original Godzilla and also the newest King of Monsters, which both were fucking incredible. Uh, I really thought uh, Godzilla would be a little cheesier than it would be the original, but it actually, like, some of it was pretty fucking brutal. And King of Monsters was f fun as hell. I mean, a love letter to kaiju movies in general. Uh, the visual effects were amazing in King of Monsters. Just fucking incredible. Um, speaking of good production values, I've come to really appreciate just really good production values and just the look of things. I mean, I always have, but I think right now, being where I am in the industry, which is not really a great place, but I'm possibly about to start a new job as a production assistant for a pilot. Um, Good production value really helps make a movie appealing to me. And it's... I don't say that, like, if it's if the story stinks, the story stinks, but, like, if I like the characters and I like the look, it really helps a movie to me. Uh, I was watching the... Robbie, co my co-host, got, uh, got the collector's edition, the Screen Factory release of silent, this first Silent Hill movie, and I really started to appreciate it a little more because it's just, you know, video game movies have a fucking hard task to accomplish. 
which is they've got to both be their own thing, but keep the spirit of the game, keep true to the spirit of the game. And that's fucking difficult, but I think Silent Hill pulled it off, kind of. As well as, of course, I'd have to obligatorily say Resident Evil. The first Resident Evil is still one of my favorite movies of all time. I uh, recently, also speaking of video game movies, I recently rewatched the 2005 Doom movie, which, very fun. Very fun movie. Very silly, but it, it kind of. It was a good mixture of the silliness of the originals and the not so silliness of the third game. The kind of aesthetic of the third game. Um, the reboot, though, looks just not good, which sucks. Um, recently rewatched Hard Boiled as well, which is fantastic. I was watching the special features on the Blu ray, the uh, Dragon Dynasty Blu ray, uh, which had a great. Interview with the guy who played Mad, or not Mad Dog. Uh, no, I think it was Mad Dog. One Eye, the the guy, the main bad guy's sidekick, and uh, it really, I mean, it had some good interviews, but it really, his interview I think was the best because it, it kind of explained Hong Kong cinema in terms of choreography is that it's like it's kind of like jazz, where it's very free form and improvised. Um. I got a bunch of movies. Recently, I also got a haul from Amoeba on Blu-rays where I got um, a, like 10 movies for like eight, for like, let's say 12 bucks or something. Like, I had, there was a deal going on and it was pretty sweet. Uh, I got War of the Worlds. I got Tears of the Sun. I got Pacific Rim. Mortal, no, Mortal Kombat was in Videotech. Uh, I got Street Kings. I got a bunch of movies that were pretty great. And uh, one of the real good ones that just I hadn't seen before is this Korean movie called The Frontline, which is about the Korean War, which, hey, just ended, by the way. Um, it was pretty amazing in terms of like production value and, and just every aspect of it really worked. Um, I also rewatched Pacific Rim. I did a lot of rewatching. Didn't watch a lot of new ones other than like The Frontline and uh, yeah, that was pretty much the only new movie I've seen other than Alita for a while. Oh, I saw this horror movie. Re Robbie recently got this horror movie called Creep, which was surprisingly really good. Like I thought it was gonna suck because he got it for like a dollar and, it, and the intro looked, the intro and the title sequence looked pretty awful. But then. It was pretty good, even especially for a DVD. It looked amazing, like it was almost Blu-ray quality on DVD, which was impressive. Uh, I got Mortal Kombat though at Videotech recently, and that's a fun-ass movie. And uh, the reboot is probably shaping up to be even better, because as much as I love early Paul W. S. Anderson, like Event Horizon is amazing. Uh, Mortal Kombat, I think, is one of his weaker ones in terms of his early days. I mean, for being the first true video game adaptation movie, I think, um, it it is definitely not as strong as Resident Evil. But it's still a fun romp. Um, speaking of Korean movies, I'm a little over the, all over the place because I I'm, I'm probably should be going to bed because it's, as I said, 12.40 now. Um, but I was watching some Park Chan-wook films, the... Um, What's it called? The Vengeance Trilogy, like Old Boy, Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance. I didn't watch Lady Vengeance yet, but uh, Jesus Christ, those are amazing movies, especially Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, which is depressing as hell. Um, I mean, I, I think Park Chan-wook is one of, in a country of great, gr a country of great filmmaking, which South Korea is, Park Chan-wook really stands out as just incredible. Um, I was watching, Jesus Christ, uh, how many sentences, of, how many bits of this are going to start with, I was watching, I was watching Starship Troopers as well, because uh, that movie rules, and I'm also developing a script for a reboot, and then I realize, oh, they're making a reboot without me, of course they are, I mean, 28, haven't done much in the business, so, and I haven't even finished the script, so, whatever, but it's like, they're rebooting a lot of things that I want to do, it kind of sucks. Um, that I don't have my shit together enough to be a part of the game right now. But um, I'm glad that they're they're redoing it. Like the Resident Evil reboot 
is probably going to be good. The Cowboy Bebop live action, I have hopes for, kind of, but I don't know. I mean, I love... The casting of Spike is, for some reason, a huge controversy. Even among, like, Robbie doesn't think it's great. His roommate doesn't think it's great. But it's like, I mean, I like John Cho. I think he could do good. But I do think there could have been a better choice with maybe, like, Iko Owais from, like, the from the raid in Mile 22. He's, who's also a choreographer. It's like, I think that would have been an amazing choice. He's also getting a good box office. Like, he's not really top of the box office right now. But he's not unknown. So, it's like... I think that would have been a better choice than uh, John Cho, but I'm excited for John Cho regardless. Um, I watched Navy Seals a lot recently because that's very fun. I think that was a really that's a really impressive movie for a uh, really impressive movie for 1991. I believe it was made. It's written by Chuck Fair, stars a uh, alleged pedophile Charlie Sheen, but also it stars Michael Bean and. Uh, Chuck Ferrer was a Navy SEAL, so it, it the writing is very authentic, if only for the fact that it is written by a guy who lived it, and uh, it was real good. I've been getting a, into an older Navy SEAL kick lately, like, or really just a Navy SEAL kick. I've been watching Act of Valor a lot. I've been watching this movie called Tears of the Sun, which I think I talked about, which is great, great Bruce Willis. Um... Let's see, what else? There's not much else to say. Uh, this is probably going to be a short one, but um, yeah. Uh, man, I wish I could think of more shit to talk about with Rambo Ref, because he's a dummy. Uh, anyways, I, I get that this was a this was a bit of a surfacey episode. We didn't get into a lot of depth, but you know, we, just me. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed my dumb phone call with uh, Ian. Uh, and I will talk to you later. Uh, thank you. Goodbye.